Hi, this is DB for Modern Video Sound Showcase, and we're in these studios of LTC. And don't use rotten kids. Never say we did nothing for you, because tonight we have a bona fide legend in the video arts, Mr. Walter Wright. Say hi to the good folks at Telemore. Hi. Oh. Um, who's that stranger you brought with you? That's Rap. Hello, Bill. Walter, um, the, the, the first time the term video art came into my consciousness was in the 70s. I remember PBS was running shows from the Experimental Television Workshop in New York. The Nanjun Pai, the mm -hmm. um, John Cage pieces, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, you ran with that crowd, didn't you? And they were running shows from WGBH in Boston. Oh, so they were out of Boston, too? Yeah, in fact, the shows you saw were probably run out of Boston, and they actually made shows up here. There were artists, TV labs in New York, Boston, San Francisco. Those are the three I know of. And I knew, yeah, I did know some of the people. I had one of my tapes on WGBH in 1970. Two or something like that. Gargantua! So we did watch, hey. we, we did see your work when we were little hippies. Yeah, you did. Watching you little yeah. Too. yeah, I've been a, a terrible influence, obviously, on many people. Well, you certainly ruined my life. I ruined and your life. And rats. And, well, maybe rats. Yeah, why you ruined his own life? True. Yeah. But there have been several other art forms prior to switching over to video. Video, yeah. yeah. He's, on, he's on the downhill. Yeah. Uh, downwardly more downward, downwardly more spiraling. Yes, yeah, so that's a nice little view, especially if you get that spiral going. Spiral, yeah. Swirling yeah. vortex. Ooh, the swirling vortex. That's always a good effect. The swirling vortex. Yeah, it's a nice good. transition. Yeah, uh, yeah. As well as it's on the yeah, that, yeah, that, that feedback that goes around like that. That's one of the early ones. Did you play, were you by any chance on the hangar router at uh, the Fillmore East or anything? I mean, what did you first. Um, I do remember going to the Fillmore East, not much about it, but <laughs> like I do it. remember going. I didn't do any, I didn't do any video. Um, but I was a hanger out at the uh, original kitchen in New York. The Theater for Electronic Arts. You worked um, with Sun Ra in the orchestra? Actually, just Sun Ra. He was doing a solo piano uh, gig with Paul Blay at a little club called Axis and Soho. That's actually a after I'd left New York and I was up at the Experimental Television Center in Binghamton and one of the artists who came to work there was Carol Goss, Paul Blay's wife, and she said, hey, why don't we go down and do this gig with Paul and Sun Ra? We'll take the equipment down and we'll do this and we'll do like a live video. Yes. Yeah, a live video thing and you know, we didn't have projectors or anything, we had some monitors and we put monitors up. That's what I want to know because in those days you didn't have this miniature equipment, right? No, you no. You had to get, you have, to have like a truck <laughs> to haul this stuff around. You had to have camera people and everything. Cause right. There was a lot to be done, right. like live cameras. So the effects you used in it was primarily live based. Mm -hmm. uh, so were there any roll ins or just what's available on the standard little 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 SEGs? And they were actually pretty simple. They were just they were just things like just straight wipes and keys and stuff like that. But we had uh, the colorizer on the television center, so that added a whole different dimension to it that you couldn't get on you know, the normal SCG. The cameras were black and white, and they got the colorizer and the colorizer in the all black all mixed together. Actually, you could so do the mixing. You could tweak the colors. You could tweak the colors, and you could do, you had keyers that operated from the top and the bottom. Okay. So you could isolate, isolate you know, like sections of the image and then combine that with one of the other cameras and such. SEG, is that stand for special, special effects, effects generator? generator yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to, um, you've you've come to the point now where you actually write your own custom software um, for your own video live yeah. video work. Yeah, I did that because I couldn't afford like all the equipment. So the American way. Yeah, you know, so the the, the board I use just fits in like an old PC. You can get the boards now for for I think around two three hundred bucks off eBay. And they run in an old, uh, older PC. Mine's like a 133 megahertz. That's all. It's an old NT system. So you can literally pick up the computer you're using for about 100 bucks now. Yeah. The problem is, and I, you know, the problem is I've offered the software to anybody who wants it, really, but nobody programs anymore. Yeah. You know, so, so none of the VJs, you know, program. They'd rather they'll just go out and buy you know, a piece of equipment put it together. Although I've noticed that. A lot of the VJs that I really like are really using 
like very simple equipment. Right. And after I went down to New York last year for mixology, you know, and there's some of some really good people down there. And they'd gone back to those old Panasonic mixers. I have a couple of them? Yeah. The old thumb yeah, whatever. Yeah. You were saying earlier, oh, I think yeah. that's primarily a, a financial issue. It was financial, it was also, even if they got the new ones, they found the new ones, you had to like punch in a whole bunch of buttons to get the effects, it just wasn't live. You know, it was all all designed for like working in the studio. And, you know, you so you got like 120 different effects, but of that, like 10 of them were kind of useful. Yeah. You know, in the old one, you got maybe 20 effects, and all 20 were useful. You know, and you could, you could really punch around the thing like reacted right away. And so, uh, what's the name of uh, your wicked little machine? What's it oh, the Shredder. takes and shreds images, so rips them apart, puts well, them back together again. It reminds me, it's like watching the work of a, being in a painter's studio, a painter who has an absolute mania for retouching his work. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. watching a time lapse. Manic painting. Okay. Yeah, it's actually pretty simple. It's kind of like the cuisine art approach, but then there's a, there's a sink, you know, so all the pieces that get, get like shredded like are sitting there in the sink. And then what happens is that the, the program goes and like recycles those continuously, like a loop. Like remember those old tape loop machines? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like a video loop machine. So it loops away and it just keeps collecting shreds you know, as it goes around. You just scrub it backwards and forwards and change the speed of the loop. It really works beautiful with uh, hypnotic techno music. And if you watch it in the dark room, mm -hmm. you know you kind of get that dream machine kind oh, yeah. of effect. Um, I see work with every kind of music. I'm there. I literally can't think of the type of music I haven't seen. Video artwork, work, uh, you know, from classical to modern oh, punk. Oh, oh, look at the punk oh, case. Oh, 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 you can really do punk. Easily, you can do some great punk. Du musst doch wissen, es gibt eine höhere Kraft, die uns alle lenkt, in deren Hand wir alle. I actually like like the real the real life footage of, of real life things, you know. But I really like people dancing through the forest too. Yeah. I mean, that's always kind of well, that's also real life. I think. That's real life. Yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of do it. Yeah. You kind of do it in real life. Yeah. yeah. At least the dancers I work with, they just do it. So.
wife Marion Kearns mm -hmm. have um, long been known for running the gallery 911 and soon you will be opening a new space right. on Chelmsford Street um, the gallery 119 and where is yeah, this located? Right here, huh? Well, the original gallery 911 did not get its name from September the 11th. Uh, was that a problem? It, after, is that, it got its name from our original street address, which was 911 East Main Street in Indianapolis. Back in 1992. Back in 1992. And then when you know, September the 11th happened, everybody said, oh man, you got to change the name. You know, oh. I said, yeah, we had this name, well, years before this. Why are we going to change the name? We're not going to change the name unless there's a really good reason. Well, we finally moved to a new place, and we have, we're going to be opening an actual real space. And it turns out that it was at 119. We said, this is, like, amazing. You know, we just turn it around backwards and we reemerge. And we no longer have that nasty association with September the 11th, right? And, and here we are. What kind of um, exhibits can we look forward to seeing at the new Gallery 119? Well, our original mission was to try and do things that were not, that the other galleries weren't doing. So at that time, we were the only one, we were the only ones in the country at that point when we started doing exclusively digital art. I did stop in at uh, the Gallery 911 when it was temporarily being housed at the Evos. Oh, yeah. There are uh, cyber arts. For cyber arts, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you saw the stereo video projection. Oh, it was this crazy oh, virtual reality uh, underwater spelunking type thing. You yeah. go in the room. You put on the 3D glasses, you got the surround sound speakers, and you swim around with your joystick. And um, it was quite realistic. Yeah. I felt like I wanted to throw up. It was really <laughs> intense. That's very <laughs> realistic. That's that is a compliment. <laughs> but it, but it was intense. We should come out on uh, Thursdays at Egos. Thursdays at Egos for the outlet night, you know. And I'm threatening to come back and battle with, with Rat here Looking for the next couple of weeks. I'll be working with more metal bands. And oh, yeah. I'll be working with the, the ballets and the more classical stuff, and I'll get the grunge crowd. Metal ballet. Yeah. Well, that's, you know. That's what we work together best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they can always watch Channel 8, you know, every now and then they run a... Oh, we run plenty of video art. Yeah, plenty, plenty of video art on that. They've been running the, uh, a couple of the DVDs I did with uh, Vartan. Uh, how much does it cost to watch the video on Channel 8? What, what's the cover here? Uh, ah, cable. let's see. Depends how you get your cable. Yeah. Yeah. Free if you have cable. Free if you have cable. You know, you just spare how you pay cable. Yeah, it's free. A part of cable. Yeah. There are bars with cable. You can sneak up in there. As long as you're the first person yeah. in the bar, you can change the channel to channel eight. Yeah. yeah. Or get yourself one of the little things. That oh, it changes every yeah. TV to channel eight. We now, we're behind the eight ball. Try to close this well. Maybe Thanks, Pelham. Goodbye now. And when we say channel eight, we mean channel eight Lowell. So yeah, channel eight one of your relatives. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or get them to actually maybe pick up a couple of the shows and rerun them. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, actually, if you live there, you can do that. You mean a free exchange of programming? Yeah, they, they can actually come, you know, maybe get a DVD here and run well, it there. Personally, unfortunately, not too familiar with Holland Public Access. Yeah. But most public access stations will allow you to uh, sponsor a show. Sponsor a show. Any other public access community. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, Pelham is owned by Adelphia right now, but I believe they will soon be brought by Comcast. Oh, okay. So we might bring Pelham into the fold? Yeah, I'll definitely bring him into the fold. Pelham, you will be assimilated. Make it on the Resistance is futile. <laughs>